What is going on guys, DK back at you with another video here for the NBA main slate here on Saturday. We got a decent slate today. Real quick though, let's see how we did last night. I did only enter <clears throat> one tournament lineup because I was at the Bulls game. But uh, So I gave my core uh, my video last night and it was Kelly Olenek, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Muscala, as well as Jamichael Green. And all those plays did very well. I mean the value... Last night, what did you know? It, it hit really, really well. It was just the frustrating thing was the Golden State Milwaukee game. I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, a two forty over under, and it almost went under by forty points. So, uh, you know, I was definitely right on the the cheap guys, just the spend ups. I was uh, definitely wrong. Um, you know, I'll take the L on that. But again, I will. I'm always going to trust Vegas, so I, I do. Uh, you know, target guys in the high over unders, but. It was just that game was such a letdown, so uh, I did end up losing. But uh, like I said, I did not enter much, so I'm ready to get into the slate for tonight. Though looks again, looks like a pretty decent slate. So all right, let's start at point guard today. And Lillard has just been playing out of his mind. Uh, his price did drop for some reason by seven hundred. So. Lillard, certainly in play. McCollum is expected to be back, so you know downgrade him a little bit, but he's just been playing crazy out of his mind, and I definitely got to consider him here at 9-4 today. Uh, the matchup against Jeff Teague and Derrick Rose does not scare me at all. So we got John Wall at 9-3. He said he's questionable, but I do fully expect him to be back as well. He was out for personal reasons last game, um, so he should be back with no limit, and the Cavs uh, obviously do not play a lot of... Uh, defense. So John Wall, 9-3. I think if I was deciding between John Wall and Brad Beal, I would just prefer John Wall because Beal's price uh, has gotten up there since uh, Wall missed the last game. They get Beal price bump. I think he's at, it. let's see, 8.8. Uh, .8. So I think I would just rather pay the extra 500 for John Wall just because he has uh, more upside. So Kyrie, uh, I do like targeting players against the Bulls. They don't play a whole lot of defense. Kyrie, you know, <clears throat> if the game stays close, I think he can have a pretty good game. 9000 I think he's a priced about right, though. So Kyrie, I think, is pretty fair today. Mike Conley, you know, the matchup, again, is very, very good. But it's just he's priced about right, too, at 8.7. He definitely still has upside, but I, th I think there's a there's better plays today. So D'Angelo Russell, one of the guys I hate seeing on the slate because he's so inconsistent. Yeah, the matchup is very, very good here against the Knicks, so you got to consider him at 8K, but not for the faint of heart. He can definitely bust easily. So the uh, the Denver Nuggets are a team that I, I really want to target today because Paul Millsap's out, as well as Gary Harris. So um, Jamal Murray here at... Last white place. Jamal Murray here at 7.8. Definitely in play. Um, I think right now I'm leaning towards kind of the more Denver value, but you can't go wrong with Jamal Murray. He should play about the whole game in one of the worst mat or one of the best matchups. So Jamal Murray is certainly in play for me. Let's see. So Deer and Fox here at 7.2. A guy I've just, you know, I like playing a lot. And if the game stays close, this guy's gonna play close to the full game. You know, Indy without Oladipo, not the same defensive team. So Fox, certainly considering him at 7.2. And then Collison, with no Oladipo, this guy's just been crazy here. Orlando, that was a blowout. That's why he got limited. If the game says close, he's going to push for 30-plus minutes. And it's a revenge game. And last time they played the Kings, he put up 45. So i got to consider Collison today as well. Trey Young, this guy I seem to never can get right. Jeremy Lin is out, so the minutes should be pretty secure here for Trey Young. And the matchup against the individual matchup against Jamal Murray is pretty good. So Trey Young, 6K, certainly in play. It's just I can never get that guy right. So Moutier with no Trey Burke. We've seen he's basically locked into good minutes now. So I am definitely considering Moutier because he's going to play about 35 minutes here. The matchup against D'Angelo Russell is very good. So Moutier, 5.8, certainly considering him as well. Lonzo Ball, a couple back-to-back -back pretty good games here. And with Brandon Ingram out of the lineup, 
he's played he's played uh, really good minutes here, 40 and 38. It's just the matchup is not the best against Memphis, uh, but you can consider him just because he's going to play uh, a whole lot of minutes. Let's see. As far as cheap point guards, again, Rivers, Santorancy, not really in play because I do expect John Wall to be back. Okay, let's move on to shooting guard. <clears throat> let's see here. So, Buddy Heald, Bogdanovich. Certainly good plays here again. Buddy Heald, 6.3. I think I'd prefer him over Bogdanovich just because it looks like his minutes are more secure than Bogdanovich. He only saw 23 minutes while Heald saw 33. So, I think if you're picking up the two, I think Buddy Heald, I would prefer. Let's see. So with Brandon Ingram out, that did open up a lot for the for the Lakers. Josh Hart played a whole lot of minutes, but he didn't do too much with the minutes. But you know, if he's gonna see like 35 minutes or so, then Josh Hart, uh, you definitely can consider. Okay, so let's get to these Cavs. So they traded away George Hill, and they basically ran an eight-man rotation last game, which I really like. <clears throat> Clarkson, Alec Burks, I. These plays, uh, I'm all over today because Washington, I love targeting players against Washington. They play no defense. Clarkson and Burks, both high usage guys off the bench. So um, <clears throat> definitely, definitely considering both of them. Burks, I mean, I think he's to be more popular because obviously he's so cheap. But I think Clarkson, still at 5K, has upside. So Clarkson and Burks, I really, really like today. Let's see, Tyreek. I'm just, you can't, I can't play this guy anymore. He's just, he's not closing in the games, and he's just, he's not the same player he was last games, or last year, so <clears throat> don't think I can go there. Let's see, where is, so Josh Hart, okay, so he's 3,700. Again, he saw 36 minutes, did not do much of those minutes, but if he's going to see that type of, those type of minutes, you have to consider Josh Hart, um, you know, KCP, eh, I think I'd rather play Josh Hart because his minutes would be more secure. And then Lance, just not seeing enough minutes. So I think of the three Lakers guards, uh, I would prefer Josh Hart just because it looks like his minutes are secure, but uh, you never can really know with uh, with the Lakers. Okay, so I mean, you got LeBron at 10-6. I just, the last couple games he has been very well against the Spurs, but Memphis, just a team I, I respect defensively, so I don't know if I want to uh, go LeBron today. So Kuzma, um, you know, with, with no Brandon Ingram, he saw 39 minutes the last two games, so it looks like his minutes are pretty secure as well, but I don't want to go crazy in my Laker exposure to Memphis. I think maybe Josh Hart and Kuzma Maybe Lonzo Ball, but again, I don't want to go. I don't want to go too crazy with my exposure there. So Otto Porter Jr. Uh, he had he played 43 minutes against the Hawks. Uh, I would have interest in him if Jeff Green's out. I do expect John Wall to be back, um, so that should limit Porter's minutes a little bit, just because the rotation will be a little bigger. And um, but again, if if Jeff Green is out of the lineup, then I will consider Otto Porter today. Let's see. So Bazemore, he had that huge game with Torian Prince on the lineup. Played 35 minutes. So if Bazemore is going to continue to play those type of minutes, you have to consider him. I know the matchup is not the best against Denver, but Atlanta doesn't have you know, a whole lot of high usage guys. So Bazemore, 4.8, definitely considering. And then Jamichael Green, I talked about. I really liked him in my video yesterday, and he did very good. Put up. Uh, almost 40 fantasy points. Again, he, he'll he see more mess if Jaron Jackson Jr. gets in foul trouble, which basically will happen every single game. So, Jermichael Green, definitely in play again as well. Again, the matchup is very good, and he's small forward eligible, which I really like. Um, so, I like playing as many bigs as I can. So, Jermichael Green, definitely considering a 4.7 today. Let's see. Okay, so let's let's get to this uh, the Denver cheapie. So, Wancho Hernan Gomez. With Millsap out and with Gary Harris out, there's a whole lot of usage to go around. And Hernan Gomez is just too cheap here at 4.3K, especially against the match against Atlanta. So I love Hernan Gomez today at 4.3K. 
and then let's scroll down to Trey Lyles today. Just, again, way too cheap. So we've seen what this guy can do in the preseason when he gets minutes. He has upside. Now, he did only see 19 minutes with Millsap out. I do expect uh, those minutes to creep up, I would say, 20 to 25, and a close to minimum salary. Um, I'm definitely considering Trey Lyles uh, today at 3.5K. I really do like that play. Okay, let's move on to power forward. And, okay, so Sabonis so was out uh, last night. We don't know if he's going to be out again today. If he's out again today, then, again, Kyle Quinn would be great value, as well as uh, Miles Turner. He did get in foul trouble, uh, but the matchup against the Kings is very good, so I would consider Miles Turner um, as one of the centers that I would, I would consider playing. So John Collins, 6.8. His price is still creeping up there, but I think he can still get you there. Um you know, the match against Denver, again, not the best, but he is power forward eligible too, so I do kind of like that. Mont or Al Horford, uh, targeting bigs against Chicago has been very profitable. Uh, we saw what Steven Adams did uh, to the Bulls. Um, I was actually there in the first quarter. He, I think he scored like the first 12 points or something, so Wendell Carter Jr. cannot stay with, um, you know, big scoring centers. Al Horford, you know, not the biggest center, but... He definitely has uh, skills, so 6.6K, I think he's certainly in play. Jaron Jackson Jr., again, only GPPs. <laughs> We've seen how inconsistent this guy is with foul trouble. He does have the upside. The matchup's good, but I don't know if I can go there because I'm a one lineup type guy. So, Bam at a bio here, a 5.4. Only have interest in if Whiteside's out. If Whiteside's out, again, then, you know, I think Bam at a bio, I think I'll go right back to the wall here. Uh, Kelly O, not so much. For some reason, a um, little confusing. With Whiteside out, he actually played less minutes. Um, so, again, that like, a little interesting because he had played 25, 29, 28 with Whiteside playing, but then with Whiteside out, he played actually less minutes. Uh, so, I think if Whiteside's out again, I think I don't think I could go Kelly O because he's priced up too much. But, bam, his minutes seem pretty secure when Whiteside's out of there. So, I think I would go back to the wall with Bam out of bio if Whiteside's out. Bagley. Uh, listed as questionable right now. I do expect him to play. They did kind of limit him a little bit to only 25 minutes, so I think he's a decent play at 5.3. Okay, so Larry Nance Jr., C.D. Osman, two guys in Duffy considering. Again, the Cavs just ran sh such a uh, short rotation, so um, and I love targeting players against the Wizards. Larry Nance, uh, he did pick up a start, played 31 minutes, did not do much, but we've seen this guy does have some upside at 4.7K. I think he's certainly a play, especially just because of the matchup. And same thing here with CD at 4.6. Um, you know, he's going to play 30-plus minutes. And we've seen this guy does have upside as well. So both those guys certainly a play for me. Let's see. Uh, Dwayne Dedman, 4.2. You know, I think he's okay. Um, they're going to need... <clears throat> they're going to need uh, him to play some decent minutes here because Denver plays pretty big. So Dedman... John Collins definitely in play. So Mason Plumley at four point one, another uh, cheap nugget. I'm definitely considering. You know he's going to play uh, close to twenty minutes a game, and he's a very high usage guy. I do love targeting bigs against Atlanta. So Mason Plumley, another cheap uh, nugget. I'm definitely considering. Okay, let's move on to the center position today, and you know you got Carl Anthony Towns here at the top at nine point seven. He had that huge game against the Hornets. I think he's priced about pretty fairly. Nurkic is, you know, not the worst defender, not the best defender. So Towns, I think he's okay. So Jokic here, 9.2. I love Jokic. I got him those, those guys out of the lineup. Only concern is, uh, you know, there could be a blowout. Atlanta is just terrible. But I'm hoping with Millsap out, with Gary Harris out, that Atlanta can keep it close. And these Denver guys see the full lot in a minute. So Jokic, if the game stays close, I think he'd have a huge game. Marcus All, he won that stretch where he was putting out close to 50 fantasy points a night, but last three nights here have been kind of a letdown. I think a lot of people will be off him, so in GPPs, I think it will be pretty low owned, but I do think he still has upside because of the matchup. Nurkic, 7.5. Uh, I, I do like this play, but I'm just a little concerned about foul trouble uh, guarding Carl Anthony Towns. Towns not the best defender, but 
both of them are pretty high usage centers, so I'm a little concerned about the foul trouble issue. And then you got Ennis Cantor at 7.3. I love targeting Biggs against Brooklyn, but he's just he's not closing the game right now. He's he's basically capped like 25 minutes. You know, that could change out of the blue. It is the Knicks, but 7.3 is a lot to pay for Cantor. I you know, I do love playing him, but he's just not seeing the minutes right now. So Miles Turner kind of let some people down. He did get in foul trouble, only played 21 minutes. But if Sabonis is out again, you know, I, I definitely could consider him at 6.6. Let's see. So anything else? Okay, so Noah Vonley, I've got to bring him up. So he's basically closing the game as the 5, which I do really like. Uh, he does have some foul trouble issues but if he can stay out of foul trouble here i think he can have a pretty big game again we've seen he has 40 plus point fantasy upside so 5.3k vanla i'm definitely definitely considering and as far as cheap centers again not a whole lot i think mason Plumley would be uh, the cap there okay so let's get into i'm gonna give my core plays again i'm feeling pretty confident about some of these cheap plays so Let's get to the Denver side, and uh, you know I love Jokic, love Jamal Murray, but these cheap Denver guys, they're just too good to pass up. Wancho Hernan Gomez at 4.3. I really like that play, as well as Trey Lyles. He's just too cheap. I know he did only see 19 minutes, but I really think he's going to push for 25 or so plus minutes, and even if the game stays, turns into a blowout, he'll, he'll get some extra runs, so... Trey Lyles, Hernan Gomez, really like both those plays. And then we can go to the Cavs because they ran sh such a uh, short rotation. And guys like Alec Burks, 3.9K, that's just too cheap. I know he had that huge game, so he's going to be pretty popular today, but I do really like Burks. And then same thing with Clarkson here. If Hood is out, um, he's unable to return, so I do expect Rodney Hood to be out. So that's just going to open up more minutes. So Alec Burks, Jordan Clarkson, really like those plays. And as well as Larry Nance, if Nance picks up a start again against the Wizards, um, he's just too cheap. Uh, he does have upside. You know, he has a block and steal upside. He fills up the stat sheet. So Larry Nance um, definitely will consider him. And that gives you about 9.5K remaining. So you can spend up on basically whoever else you want. Um, you know, I really like Jokic today. Um, Lillard is pretty good play. Uh, you know, you got Jamal Murray's decent spend up, but I really think uh, this is a pretty solid core. You know, you don't have to play all these guys, but for value wise, um, I do really like a lot of these plays. So I think that's going to do it for today's video, guys. If you have been enjoying the content, please like this video, subscribe. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section down below. It's also important to follow me on Twitter. That will be in the description below. And yeah, I'll be back uh, tomorrow for a slate on Sunday, so I'll see you guys then.